Hello, welcome to Mr. Allred's Two Minutes On. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about globalisation. This should be useful for you if you're doing GCSE business studies. It might be beneficial for A-level business, but you might want to look at something a bit more detailed. This is really going to talk about the brass tax knowledge and not really take it any further and look at detailed case study of businesses. Uh, so if you're doing the A-level courses, that's something I would recommend you look at as well. Um, so let's start with globalization. What is it? Well, it's the interconnectivity of the world's markets. It's the world's markets starting to link together to transfer goods and services from one to the other. Uh, the tendency for us to deal with and start to talk with and communicate with those other economies around the world. And over the past few years, we've seen a rapid increase of that. We've seen that take on different forms and get bigger and bigger. And there's reasons for this. And the main one being technology. If we think about technology and the rise of the Internet and the rise of Internet communication, such is email that's made that communication much easier uh, between those economies now i don't need to physically go to southeast asia if i want to produce a product i can email them or more apparent now is zoom and skype we can actually have those face-to-face -face conversations um, beyond that though there's actually the idea of shipping those goods around the world that's become much cheaper because of technology we've standardized shipping containers for example which has driven down the cost to those those producers and therefore moving products now on average per unit is actually nearly free uh, which sounds like an oxymoron i know but per product it starts to be such a low cost that virtually it doesn't impact businesses at all more than that now, we've seen freedom of trade. We've seen trading blocks set up around the world, such as NAFTA or the European Union, that allows free trade to happen. And they're governed by the World Trade, trade Organization, and they've got rules that which businesses listen to and con economies listen to and how they trade with each other. And we've seen more and more of those sort of agreements take place over the years, which enables us to trade more freely with different businesses and different economies. We've seen changing consumer tastes. Consumers want a different form of products. If we thought back to 50 years ago and we look at fish and chips as being probably the nation's favorite takeaway. Well, now that's not the case, depending on the research. If you look at it, it's either a Chinese or it's an Indian. So if you think about that, there's different products and different spices and things like that. They're in those products that we can't get domestically. So we have to go abroad for it. We have to find a way for it. And that's been fueled by our change in desires as consumers. But well, this is some real positive benefits to this. When we get better products, we get products that meet our demands better. We tend to get cheaper prices um, and we get greater choice. And that for us as consumers is what we want. We want the best product at the best possible price. I'm not forced to take a specific product anymore. We get more cheaper, efficient production. It's cheaper to produce abroad. Labor is cheaper. Resources are cheaper. And so what do we do? We, we get a cheaper production and that's often pushed on towards us consumers in terms of lower prices or alternatively, those excess profits a business is now making goes re into their development and therefore they give us a better product in the long run. More than that, we've seen increased investment into those lower economically developed countries. We're now paying to set up factories in Southeast Asia and things like that, that gives jobs and that sees the redistribution of the wealth of the world going into those economies. However, there's some negatives of globalization. If we think about what I just said about that redistribution of wealth, some people would say actually it's exploitation of those lower economically developed countries for cheaper labor and cheaper resources. If we think about labor, often these economies don't have the same labor standards as we do. They don't have the same national minimum wages, for example, that therefore these businesses maybe are exploiting these workers. We see a loss of cultural identity. If I popped you somewhere in the middle of Europe on a high street, you would see the same type, sort of takeaway fast food restaurants selling the same sorts of products, the same drinks, you know, the Coca-Cola, the Pepsis, all those different things. You would see those. And actually, then, is that eroding our cultural identity? Are we actually seeing what what that country is about? Or are we seeing a version of it that globalization has caused? We also see negative externalities. These are third party costs incurred, but not paid for when we buy a product. Pollution is a prime example. Globalization has caused us to, to, to pollute the world, really, if you think about it. Um, we've seen global warming on the rise, and that's because we're producing more and more. You see countries like China with, with massive smog issues, Mexico City with massive smog issues, and they've tried to take measures to adjust that, but it's not really had the impact they wanted. Um, that really has been fueled by globalization and our excessive need to produce more and more products. 
This is Mr. Almost Two Minutes On, slightly longer this one, but hopefully you've learned something today.